Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm Chief Sweet, and today I'm gonna to be talking about Madagascar hissing cockroaches, how I keep them, how I breed them, and we're gonna I'm gonna teach you exactly how I build their enclosure. So the enclosure I use for my Madagascar hissing cockroaches are these right here. They're called easy storage bins, the 79.3 quart or 75 liters. They're waterproof, they have a securable lid. I love these. You can get them at Home Depot, Target. I don't know if I've ever seen them at Walmart, but you can get them at those places. So because it does have a, a very secure lid and no air, we are gonna have to drill some air holes into this. I do recommend doing like two and a half inch air holes. I got my little air mesh online from a company. It wasn't too expensive. I have a link down in the description, but I will say that the th I use three and a half inch, I believe, and I would definitely recommend even go smaller to about a two inch, mainly because you can use a drill to actually drill into it. Um, I had a three and a half inch and you, I could not find a three and a half inch drill bit. So this is how I cut the hole. I got a piece of cardboard box and I put this uh, screen on top of the cardboard box and I pushed it down and it made a little imprint and I just traced the imprint with magic marker. And then when I traced it with magic marker, I cut it out and as you can tell it fits perfectly over it. I used this as a guide. I then got a magic marker and I traced out a spot on the little easy storage bin, as you can see right here. I then got a soldering iron and I basically burnt the hole out so that way it also would be smooth but like i said i didn't really have any other way of drilling this uh, through so i just basically burned a hole through the plastic if you do this do it in a ventilated area because it does have fumes so make sure to do it outside or something like that also be careful not to burn the house down um as you can see this is me doing it right here the storage bin was actually kind of thick on that part i actually had to melt it pretty good uh, kind of use some force to poke a hole through the plastic and go around it a couple times to finally get it to pop out like it did right here. Now I'll only put the vents on the front and back side. You can do the other sides, but I didn't put a vent on top of the enclosure, mainly because it was gonna let a lot of the moisture escape through the top. You can drill some holes on top of the enclosure if you want to, but you don't have to. It's really up to you how you wanna do your ventilation. This is how I did mine. So now you got your hole drilled, you can just go ahead and put the little screen in it, as you see right here, and it fits perfectly, look at that. And then you get the little metal flaps and you just go ahead and like bend them over. But if you can tell, I, like I said, I did burn it a little too much and there's kind of some open spaces and I was a little worried that some Madagascar babies were gonna get through there. So what I did was I got a hot glue gun and I just go, I just pretty much pushed it on inside of the little gaps and sealed it with a hot glue gun. Next up, all I do after this is put in the substrate. I did have my colonies already in another box, so I had to put the colonies inside of a bin and then get a bin ready and just transfer them over. So it was a lot of transferring over, as you can see right here. I also keep them in like bioactive terrariums. You can put pothos in there and they will grow inside this bin. Um, so if you look right here, there's tons and tons of isopods and I have to put tons of leaf litter and I get my leaf litter from outside, outside my backyard. There's no bad, any, nobody sprays in my yard of pesticides or anything. So I don't have to worry about that. But look at just how, you're gonna see more isopods in a second as well. But as you can see, there's leaves and I have to pretty much make sure that leaves are always on the ground because the isopods and the hissing cockroaches will eat the leaves. I pretty much have to replace the leaves once a week because they go through it quite a bit. And if you look right here, there's a freshly molted hissing cockroach, that's pretty cool. Here, and I am putting the substrate from the old enclosure in, and if you look, you look at all those isopods, they're going crazy. That is just, oh my gosh. I didn't realize how many there was, but looking back on the footage, there's just so many isopods. And then I get those, and I pretty much uh, sell them off to anybody around where I live for like $10 a piece. And then as I said before, I just go ahead and throw leaves all in there, all on the bottom, cover on the bottom, and they will eat all of these leaves in one week. It'll be totally gone, it'll just be just stems. But once I put the leaves down, I just go ahead and throw the other stuff on top of it. Like you see right here, I throw the cork bark and little egg cartons on top of that. And just, they go a hide after this, it's pretty easy. And then you're done. That's it, that's all I do. I do the same thing with the other regular hissing cockroaches as well. This is their enclosure. Um, the ones you just saw, they were Halloween hissing cockroaches. And as you can tell, I'm just throwing in the dirt. I didn't have enough dirt, so I had to put more in on this one. Bam, there's the new substrate. And again, like I said, all you have to do, put the leaves down, throw the cockroaches in there, and you are done. That's all it takes, that's all I do, and they breed like crazy. So does the isopods, you can put plants in here and they'll grow, and that is my method for my DIY Madagascar hissing cockroach enclosures.
And with this way, you don't have to worry about any hissing cockroaches escaping at all. You don't have to put Vaseline. You don't have to do anything. They will not get out of this enclosure. Anyways, that's all I have. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.